Now, hi, welcome to this new product post video here at prototype.co.uk. Uh, we haven't had an update for the last month. It's over the summer, it's been very quiet for new products coming in. So we've got quite a few to run through, so we'll start with this first one. This is part number PP774-7863. It's a microchip TC74 temperature sensor. Now, this is an I2C based temperature sensor with an 8 pit output. It covers 0 degrees up to 125 degrees Celsius. Uh, this can be run anything from 2.7 volts up to 5.5 volts and on standby it takes as little as 5 nanoamps and when it's running it pulls roughly 200 nanoamps. This is a TO220-5 package so it's easy to mount and the footprints are easy available. And moving on we have this small microcontroller development board. Now this is a Perulu P Star 25K50. It's based around the PIC Microchip 18F 25K50, which comes with 32K of flash. Now on this board, only 24K of that is available. 8K is taken up with the USB bootloader. Now it comes with 2K of RAM, 256 bytes of EEPROM, and the Onboard USB is full speed, so that's 12 megabits per second. And the logic on these boards are 5 volts, so nice and easy to interface with most of your equipment. Uh, it also runs internally at 48 megahertz, which is around 12 million instructions per second. It's supplied with an external 16 megahertz clock and has 19 I.O. pins, with 13 of those can be used as analog input pins. There's two PWM capable outputs. One is on a fixed pin and one can be between four of the pins on the board. And next up we have this MOSFET board. This is PPMOS FET5. It's a five channel MOSFET board designed to be controlled with microcontrollers or any other sort of three to five volt input device. Give you a, a quick run over. You have your power going out to your loads on these two connections so you can either use a standard barrel jack connector or screw terminals on here. You have your input from your logic device for instance an Arduino you had ground and then five inputs to switch each of the MOSFETs on. You have an indicator light to determine when there is a high signal coming into these pins. A power light will come on when there's voltage on the power pins here and then you have screw terminals for the output where you have a, a positive output on the right hand side and your ground on the left hand side. We also have protection diodes on here so if you do have an inductive load on there when the power is disconnected or switched off using the microcontroller you're not going to destroy the MOSFETs when the so electromagnetic field collapses and turns into a big jolt of energy coming back through your circuit. Next up we have PPSEN-12916. This is an HMC6343 breakout board. It's got three magnetoresistive sensors and three MENS sensors in there as well. Now this is a small I2C device. It connects up to a 3.3 volt system and takes around about four and a half milliamps when it's actually doing its reading and the output on there is five hertz so it's 200 milliseconds between each of the outputs and it's ideal as this can be mounted in any of the three axes depending on your project so you can lay flat stand up or even heading along and you just look at the data sheet and you make a small change to one of the EEPROM values to enable which way up this goes it's ideal if you're limited for space for mounting your sensor. And moving on, we have a couple of batteries here now. Uh, we have a 1200 milliamp hour and uh, 2500 milliamp hour LiPo rechargeable batteries, both outputting 3.7 volts. Now, these have been re added to our website as you may know there's issues with Royal Mail carrying these across country, uh, primarily because the aircraft carriers don't like having LiPo batteries on board. 
and also when we try and import these from our supplier uh, we're restricted on the quantities that we can normally bring in but we've uh, managed to find these two batteries which currently are not covered within those restrictions so we can get a fair amount of these in. Now the part numbers for these are PPADA258 that's for the small 1200 milliamp hour battery and for the larger one is PPADA328 now with these batteries you will need a, a charger and you do have to use a lipo charger or lithium polymer charger don't use a, an iCAD charger or anything like that you will actually destroy the batteries and as always there's a, a possibility of uh, doing further damage to either your equipment or yourself should you use these incorrectly and next we have these fingerprint scanners now uh, this is part number PPSEN-13007 and these are high speed fingerprint scanners they can store 20 fingerprints and do use that as a reference so when you call the routines from your software it will give a, a reference number to the fingerprint that's recognised or a null value obviously if it doesn't recognise that now the finger can be placed on the, the sensor uh, at any angle you don't have to make sure you're perfectly aligned as the sensor can pick up your fingerprint throughout the whole 360 degrees now you communicate with this using UART which is connected through the connector at the top there and that runs at 9600 baud and I've actually had this up and running with an Arduino using the libraries that are linked through the product page and next up we have this giant servo uh, this is PPPOL 2375 that's an HD 1235MG servo now this is a, a giant servo or a, a quarter scale servo they're incredibly large and beefy and very powerful as well at 6 volts it's actually got 490 inches at an inch or unlike most servos you can run these up to 7.4 volts and you will get up to 560 ounces at an inch now it's a full metal geared motor as well which means you're not going to strip any of the plastics by putting a, a load on there and a normal servo can pull up to about an amp under a stall condition this one will pull up to 9 amps under a stall condition so you do have to make sure that you have got a, a beefy power supply when you're hooking this up and next up we have part number PPDEV-12749 this is the PC Duino 2 development board now this board is designed to run Linux or Android uh, the development system is designed to use the same footprint as your Arduino shields there as well which is nice and handy uh, all you have to do is hook up a keyboard mouse, power supply and HDMI, you know the HDMI port on the end there and you can also hook up to a network with an Ethernet cable there as well now it's got a 1 GHz ARM Cortex 8A CPU on it there's also an OpenVG 1.1 Mali 400 core graphics processor on there as well there's 1 gig of DRAM it's got 4 gig of flash a micro SD card slot on the back there uh, that'll take up to 32 gigs of storage on there so it makes it an ideal embedded system for you as I say it's already got Arduino style headers on there as well so it's ready to go with your Arduino shields and it runs Linux version 3 or Ubuntu 12.04 uh, and it will also support Android uh, version 4 as well now there's 0.1 in space in GPIO hold GPIO headers uh, they're in the footprint of the Arduino shields as I've already explained there as well now this board does have a, a fairly beefy requirement of 2 amps at 5 volts so you will need to buy one of the more powerful uh, power supplies and these are available on our website now the API that comes with this board has got access to the UART so you have digital input and output connecting to other UART controlled devices, it's got analog to digital converter, there's PWM outputs, obviously general purpose input and output on the pins as well, 
you've got I squared C as well as an SPI bus there as well. Uh, you'd write programs on here using C or C++. Uh, you can program in Java, uh, Python, and there's a myriad of other languages out there. And that concludes this week's new product post here at Protopec.co.uk. Thanks for watching.